Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm John Shumway. We have now learned that a woman who was last seen in Pitcairn on Thursday night was found dead in Monroeville today. Erica Stanish has been following the developments throughout the evening tonight and joins us live with the latest. Erica. We're learning Christy Spacuza may have been on the job as an Uber driver when family reports she went missing. And now a homicide investigation is underway as police work to determine what happened. Pitcairn police say Christy Spacuza was driving as an Uber driver Thursday night when family says she went radio silent. Police say this morning they found Spacuza's car on 4th Street in Pitcairn. Shortly after, Allegheny County police say they found her body about one mile away on Rose Creek Drive. Pitcairn police say her purse was still in the car and an Uber camera inside was missing. So. Uber drivers. That's a tough job, Jack. Can we cut the crap? We all know who did this. It, it, <laughs> we know who did this. There's, the, the police are going to make an arrest in this. We all know who did this. Police say this morning they found Spacuza's car on 4th Street in Pitcairn. Shortly after, Allegheny County police say they found her body about one mile away on Rose Creek Drive. Pitcairn police say her purse was still in the car and an Uber camera inside was missing. Allegheny County homicide detectives are now leading the investigation and could be seen searching for evidence on this hillside where Spacuza's body was found. It's horrible that one of us has gone missing and we have no protection. And now we're worried, are we going to be next? We talked to two local Uber drivers who say they're horrified by what happened and believe more safety measures need to be in place to keep drivers safe. It scares me because we have no protection. They Looking at these two gliders, man. <laughs> these two King of the Hill characters, man. Um, listen. It's no protect. Listen, man. You got a camera in the car. The person gives their information. The person has to sign up for an Uber account. So they give their information to sign up for the account. There's no cash transferred. So you're not carrying money. I think the Uber model, the Lyft model, protects the drivers very well. It's just that it's 2022, man. The sun man don't care no more, man. He just doesn't care. Okay? And I'm one. But I know a bunch of them. It scares me because we have no protection. They say drivers are required to get federal background checks and need a flawless driving record so their riders know they're safe, but says nothing is done to protect the drivers. If there was a barrier between me and them it, so that they can't reach us, it wouldn't even be a concern. That person would have never gotten to Christie's camera. They would have never gotten to Christy. An investigation into what happened to Spacuza is ongoing, but until the case is solved, these drivers say they'll be driving with extra caution. She deserved better, and it's time for things to change. This is not no longer okay. Police have not released any information on a suspect or suspects, but they are asking anyone that knows anything to call the county tip line. Police say callers can remain anonymous. Reporting live, Erica Stanish, KDK News. Bad that things happened. I feel bad for her. Yeah, but it shouldn't be happened here in like big city like New York, like, especially in Chinatown. It's like always like crowded.
There is such fear in Chinatown tonight after the body of 35-year-old Christina Yuna Lee was found stabbed to death in the bathtub of her sixth-floor apartment at 111 Christie Street. Police sources say this man, 25-year-old Asamad Nash, followed her home just before 4.30 Sunday morning. Police believe he followed her up six flights of stairs and into her apartment. Someone heard screams and called 911. When police arrived, the suspect refused refused to open the door, leading to a standoff. Once police made it inside, Nash, wearing a bloody sweatshirt, was handcuffed and led to a waiting ambulance. Super Think about that. You, you, you heard that correctly. He followed the woman up six flights of stairs. How many stories have we done? Or have you seen lately with Brothers is follow women, and the woman locks the door at the last minute. <laughs> Famously, that one in the Bronx where the woman just she just closed the door and locked it. The guy was just about to get in there. Um, we've seen this. That well, this happened a lot. This guy follows the woman up six flights of stairs. Forced his way into her apartment. Neighbors heard screams. When the police got there, he wouldn't open the door. There was a standoff. They finally got him off, got him out, and he was taken straight to an ambulance. What a country, man. What a great country, man. They got to make sure this guy's all right before they can take him over to prison, to the jail. This country, we don't deserve this country, man. And that's why I think we're destroying it. Because we're not worthy of this country. Could you imagine if this was in that woman's homeland? The police would be worried about putting getting this guy to some damn ambulance. Could you imagine if it was in his country? <laughs> Whoever his DNA ancestry <laughs> DNA <laughs> say he from. It'd be a quick trial. By the tribal leaders, they come to their conclusion, and it would all be done. I mean, everything, the whole shaboying boying, will be done by Sunday. <laughs> everything. They ain't dragging it out for months and years and litigating appeals. Everything. I mean, everything. The ruling, the rendering, <laughs> everything would be done by sundown. Police believe he followed her up six flights of stairs and into her apartment. Someone heard screams and called 911. When police arrived, the suspect refused to open the door, leading to a standoff. Once police made it inside, Nash, wearing a bloody sweatshirt, was handcuffed and led to a waiting ambulance. Super tragic. That's so upsetting. And it's, I mean, it's pretty unnerving. Nash has not been charged with any crime yet. He has seven prior arrests, three in the last month for possession of a forged instrument and criminal tampering. Three arrests in the last month. This brother looks like he's from um, Ethiopia, maybe. He's a horn, he's a horn African, some, somewhere over there. Three arrests in the last month. Nash has not been charged with any crime yet. He has seven prior arrests, three in the last month for possession of a forged instrument and criminal tampering. Police are not investigating this murder as a hate crime, which has some lawmakers. 
They're not investigating this as a hate crime. And they made that decision immediately. Immediately. And they may be right. They may be right. It's just they made that they immediately. All right, young man, step into the ambulance. Okay, this isn't a hate crime. <laughs> Immediate. Police are not investigating this murder as a hate crime, which has some lawmakers upset. There is no doubt that Asian American New Yorkers are being disproportionately targeted in these acts. This is a pattern that has been established, and it cannot be denied that one cause of that is racism and xenophobia. It is believed Nash is undergoing a psychiatric evaluation, and both politicians and regular New Yorkers see mentally ill people on the streets of the city as a growing problem. There is no doubt that we have a mental health system in this city, which is broken. He has some form of mental problem. It's crazy in New York. So it's getting out of control. They need to do something. Suspect in this deadly stabbing has been arraigned on multiple charges. We're now learning the suspect was out on bail, and the mayor calls it another reason the city needs bail reform. CBS. <laughs> Wait a second. Eliminating cash bail was the reform. See the, these games these liberals play? Two years ago, these guys get locked up over and over again for violent offenses. Eventually, a judge says, look, you're staying in here until your trial date. They said that that was racist. And it needed to be reformed because it was racist. Sun people don't have as much money as gliders, so they would disproportionately be in jail for crimes that they hadn't been proven guilty for yet. Because, you know, you still have to go to court. So they, there's all these innocent sudden men in jail, according to liberals, on crimes they weren't guilty of technically yet. It's racist. So they reformed it. And now you have what we have. So you got to call what, you got to go, <laughs> what y'all want to do now is put it back to how it was before 2020. You got to call that something else, something other than bear reform. You can't call that the same thing. We're now learning the suspect was out on bail and the mayor calls it another reason the city needs bail reform. CBS 2's Elijah Westbrook joins us live from City Hall this morning with the latest on that part of the story. Elijah. Yeah, well, Chris and Mary, sources tell us the suspect has a criminal history dating about seven years at this point, and now there's questions swarming this morning over why he was out on the streets to begin with. Asamad Nash, the man police say killed a woman in Chinatown on the weekend, is no stranger to being on the wrong side of the law. Sources say his criminal history ranges from minor subway crimes relating to selling swiped Metro cards and damaging Metro card machines. Our sources also say Nash was arrested for assault and harassment for an incident involving a man on the subway in the Lower East Side back in September. He was out on bail when police say he killed Christina Lee. He should not have been on the streets. We should do a better job of making sure dangerous people are not, not on the street. Mayor Adams in Albany on Monday says Nash is the poster child for bail reform, given he had three open cases, including assault and possession of stolen property. When asked about getting the legislature to support bail reform. I am optimistic of the energy that we are going to work together to make sure we stop the feet of crime and make sure our city's safe. But when we asked Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty about bail reform, he said he was open to discussions, but is afraid that every horrible crime, like the Chinatown stabbing, will be used to push an agenda the legislature might not be able to support. Everybody, yo, I don't want to hear nothing about representation matters. You're overrepresented everywhere, okay? You want to win every Oscar. 
If a son man don't win, a son person don't win every Oscar, it's a bunch of whining on Twitter that night. <laughs> You're overrepresented in every sphere of this country. But everything that people find is frustrating to them about what's going on, it's just so easy to just blame, you know, bail reform. And I don't think that's, that does any of us um, a, a, a service, a good service, if we're really trying to get to the, to the solutions. Adams met together with Hasty and Senate President Andrea Stewart-Cousins to solve the city's issues, but he said whether he gets bail reform changes or not, he still has to keep the city safe. I can't turn around and say, well, I didn't get help from different places, so now my city is not safe. Nope, I'm not accepting that. And as for the suspect accused of killing 35-year-old Christina Lee, we're hearing that he is now facing both burglary and murder charges. Running live this morning from City Hall, Elijah Westbrook, CBS2 News. Elijah, thank you. A murder suspect accused of following a woman in Chinatown and stabbing her to death, telling reporters today he didn't do it. Police say 25-year-old Asamad Nash followed Christina Lee up six flights of stairs to her apartment and forced his way in just before she closed the door. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly. That woman had to feel that sudden man following her. Like, she had, she she lives in New York. She well, you know what? A lot of these liberals don't even know what's going on. They think that police killing <laughs> police police killing Sun Men is the biggest thing. So maybe she didn't know what was going on in her own city because she probably lives on Twitter and lives on Facebook and you know follows all these blue check liberals on these social media platforms. You know, she probably thinks because they don't report any of this. This is what you got to understand. I follow a lot of blue checks just to, you know, <laughs> troll them and lurk. They 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 cover maybe 0.001% of this stuff. If you watch CNN, MSNBC, and follow blue check liberals on social media, you would have no idea we're in the middle of a massive murder wave. So she may not have known in this raggedy, transient, dust bucket sun man's following her up the steps. Every every flight, he's right behind her. He's right, like, oh, you know. Have to be, you know. I mean, her mind, her spidey senses probably was going off because no matter how liberal you are or how woke you are, that tingling. That spidey sense, that gut feeling when you bubble guts, your stomach start hurting. <laughs> you got a fart. <laughs> that feeling. Woke just can't save you from that. But she, she, you can override that when you're, when you're w w with your, with your wokeness. You can override it. <sighs> you know what I mean? You can, you can, you can, like, it's like when a pop-up comes up on your computer screen, you can just click, you know, no, <laughs> keeps popping up, no, keeps popping up, no, 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 cancel, cancel, cancel. 25-year-old Asamad Nash followed Christina Lee up six flights of stairs to her apartment and forced his way in just before she closed the door. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson is in Chinatown where family and friends held a vigil today in Christina's memory. Kimberly? Well, Sade, a community coming together after such a horrific attack. And here in front of the building where Christina Lee lived, a memorial. It sits in the exact spot where her killer lurked in the shadows, followed her, and then pounced. We deserve to be safe. Not feel safe, but yes. be safe in our city, in our home. Things reaching a boiling point at this vigil in Chinatown today for Christina Lee. The frustration over what this man, Asamad Nash, allegedly did to the 35-year-old, something he denied. I didn't tell nobody. Telling reporters, quote, I don't know what's going on. It's absolutely gruesome and it's horrible. As a father of five daughters, it scares me 
to even know that uh, these kind of incidents are occurring out there. Chilling security footage allegedly shows a 25-year-old following Christina into her building on Christie Street, slipping through the door just before... Well, what? I lived in several buildings. The last two buildings I lived in when I was in D.C. were buildings where you needed a key fob just to get into the building. And what she did put everybody in the building at risk. There's a reason the the guy had to slip in behind her. Because once that door closed, you can't get in without a key fob. So by letting that guy just slip in, by just leaving the door to hang, by not closing it behind her, she put everyone at risk. What if she gets in her apartment and this guy's just wandering around the hallways and then another woman, you know, comes out or just comes in or just, you know, going about her business in the hallway and he she runs into him. What she did was very, very, you know, irresponsible. She put everyone in there in, at risk. And I know she probably didn't mean it. You know, I mean, I'm not saying she intentionally did it. It's just that, you know, there's a there's a reason why, you know. <laughs> Don't just leave, you know, it's the reason why they, they, you know, it's locked for people who don't have the key fob. And she didn't, she wasn't aware, she wasn't paying attention. All I can say is that she probably just watches CNN and NBC. And she has, and she thinks like if she's not to see a cop and a son man in the same place at the same time, that she won't witness that cop killing that son man for no reason. And other than that, there's nothing else going on. Chilling security footage allegedly shows the 25-year-old following Christina into her building on Christie Street, slipping through the door just before it closed. She was alone Sunday morning around 4.30, had no idea she was being tracked. Police say once inside her apartment, Nash stabbed Christina to death using a kitchen knife. Always look around 360. A sentiment shared by many here who paid their respects in what officials believe was a random, vicious murder. Scary. It's special in this park. It's all homeless. They live here. Have you been ever approached? Many times. I kicked them. I, I defense myself. Salute to you, G Jenny Lou, man. Jenny Lou the goat, man. Salute to Jenny Lou, man. <laughs> Jenny Lou say, man, look. I refuse to be a victim, man. Salute to you, Jenny Lou, man. Have you been ever approached? Many times. I kicked them. I, I defense myself. Which was the case with Christina. Sources tell Eyewitness News she did fight back. Christina graduated from Rutgers, was a digital producer for Splice. A spokesperson saying in part, quote, our hearts are broken. Adding Christina was always dedicated to making beautiful and inclusive artwork. She she was dedicated to making beautiful and inclusive artwork. God, she was super woke. Super wokey woke. Our hearts are broken, adding Christina was always dedicated to making beautiful and inclusive artwork. She was irreplaceable, a magical person, always filled with joy. This particular horrible story just hit a little too close to home. We're around the same age. Yeah, that could have easily been me. And as for the suspect, Nash had been on supervised release for allegedly vandalizing more than two dozen Metro card machines. The 25-year-old has also been arrested twice for assault, once for punching a man in the face. For